Hey guys, the postman just dropped off this nice big box at my doorstep, so you know what that means. Time for an unboxing video. I was getting kind of anxious about this because I, I won this eBay auction over a week ago when this was just coming from Indianapolis. So I wouldn't have thought it would have taken eight days or so to get here. I'm not going to complain as long as it's undamaged. Well, looks like we have at least some foam in here. Not a whole lot though, but let's hope it was enough. Walmart bag is a nice touch. Alright, so what is it? It is, or at least it should be, a tube tester, specifically Hickok 600A. Sure looks like that's what it is. 600A. Now you might be asking yourself, how many tube testers does this guy need? Well, some method to my madness. There really is no one tube tester that will do it all. So over the over the years, I've accumulated a number of tube testers. I mostly work on stuff from the 20s through the 50s. I really don't get into the 60s and 70s, and I don't do a whole lot of audio stuff. So, briefly I was looking for Hickox 6000 until I realized it doesn't have the old style sockets. But it can do compactrons and the other newer tube types. However, I don't really work with that stuff much, so I don't have a real need for it. So. I started looking at older models and then realized the 600A, its predecessor, is really what I wanted. This will uh, do anything pre-war, for sure. And I imagine quite a few tubes uh, used in, up into the early 50s as well. Now I do have some other nice tube testers like my I-177, the militarized transconductance tube tester, which was I think also made by Hickok. But that uh, really only does pre-war tubes. It doesn't even have a 9-pin socket like this does. Although there was an adapter kit you could get for it. They're a little hard to find and pricey. And you could also make your own. But even with the adapter kit, still a little awkward. Like if you want to test a 12AU7, you have to jump through a couple extra hoops that I will, won't have to with this tester. I also have my Hickok Cardmatic, which is a really nifty tester and works great. However, I have a limited set of cards. And although that has all the old sockets as well, I don't have any cards for older style tubes like a Type 80 or Type 45, and no one seems to have them. Now, now I do have some emission type testers, like my triplet that I use all the time and the Knight 600Bs, but emission type testers aren't quite, no, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you if a tube is good or bad, if it's got a short, if it's gassy, and maybe secondary emissions, but it won't do a real transconductance test, which is good for audio tubes. It really does a more thorough testing of how well the tube amplifies. So that led me to get uh, this device. Didn't get a great deal, but I didn't get ripped off by any means either, assuming it works. I paid about the, the, the going rate for these. This one seemed to be in pretty decent shape, and it also, I like the fact that it has these socket savers. See, when you stick tubes in and out of these tube testers again and again and again, you can wear out these sockets. Well, you don't want to have to replace one of these because they're not so easy to get out. So they have these socket savers, which is a socket that fits into the socket, and you stick your tubes into these. If these wear out, you just take them out and put another socket saver in.
seems to all be here. Did a little bit of reading up on it. The calibration procedure seemed awfully similar to that for the I-177. Also like the built-in roll chart that it has. The, uh, the 177, you have to flip through a book. It's also giving me a pretty good idea of the types of tubes it can test. It's a little stiff. Hopefully, uh, I took a look under there. Maybe, uh, there's something can be uh, done about that. I'm actually seeing more tube types in here than I was expecting. A lot of series strung TV tubes, so this definitely uh, goes well into the 50s with the tube types it supports. Right, so if I can <laughs> fix this up. The reason I can tell they're series strung tubes is because they have the uh, the eyeball numbers like a 19 BG6 instead of a 6 BG6. That's a needle moving as I run my hand across this. I was just reading up on that. Somebody on the antique radio form had exactly the same problem. Is Hickok 600B, uh, A or B, or whatever, the needle is sticking because of static buildup. And I know another one of my YouTube buddies has been having a lot of trouble with uh, meter movements lately, too. I'm going to take this really slow and careful because I know these meters are very pricey. To replace. One of the tips I believe was to take some anti static uh, laundry uh, thingies, uh, the little tear off sheets that you throw in with your, into the dryer with your laundry, and rub them on, rub it on here and see if you can dissipate the static. Also, it might be that when I turn this on, uh, the uh, the meter might straighten itself out, we'll see. Because it definitely was on zero when I opened this up, but it only jumped over when I actually touched this. Let's just move back down to zero now. Alright, I am going to uh, do a little more careful inspection of this. And uh, let's take a look under the hood before I try plugging it in. I think I have some good news to report. I wiped down the meter with some Novus number no. one, which not only cleans, shines, and protects, but it has anti static properties. So I spritz some on to soft paper towel and wipe the meter down. And the needle's no longer sticking. So I just hope it stays that way. I've been going over the tester in more detail, and so far everything seems to be alright. All the switches operate, the controls turn, the bulbs look to be okay. I also took a look at this paperwork that was in the inside lid. Found something kind of interesting. It says, this is a condensed reprint of the roll chart dated October 1st, 1957, and contains all the older tube all the older type tubes. In order to save room on the new chart, January 1st, 1958, for new tube data, it was necessary to delete data on older tubes. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm very glad that this is intact and in good readable condition and present because it sure sounds like none of these tube types are going to be in the roll chart. But it also gives me a date range. So assuming that. Uh, this is accurate, this chart is from 1958, which is pretty good for me because my newest TVs are the Predictas and those are from around 59, 60, so there's a good chance that every tube and every TV I've got is in this roll chart. Let's see what else. Uh, 
here's the little clip and it either goes into the plate or grid. I'm assuming that's what the PNG stand for. I've never actually used this tube tester before, so I'm kind of <laughs> guesstimating on some of this stuff. The line cord is in fantastic condition. Uh, this is probably natural rubber and no cracks, very pliable, excellent condition. I also started taking all the screws off, and there's the last one. So, get that out of there. Now I should be able to carefully take this whole thing and flip it over. Okay, here it is. And first blush, it looks to be unrestored, all original, and in pretty darn good condition too. Got a few original ca or old type caps. I presume they're original. One here, one here, a few others scattered around probably. I imagine I'll replace those. Here are the two tubes. There should be a 5Y3 and an 83. Sure hope this 83 is good because <laughs> I had about four or five and I didn't think I'd ever need any so I sold them all off. Because uh, they're in pretty high demand mostly from guys with Hickok tube testers and they do pay a premium for these looks pretty darn old, might be the original as well and here's that chart nothing obvious to explain why it's so hard to rotate from the other side hoping uh, maybe it's just a little loose or something, maybe when somebody installed the updated roll they didn't get it in here quite right line adjust rheostat so on I'm really hoping it's enough that I don't have to do anything serious with this because this does look a tad complicated certainly more complicated than uh, the i177 I uh, restored a while back I wouldn't be surprised though if resistors like this carbon composition 1 meg resistor have drifted up in value. Same with this guy over here. I presume things like this and these guys are precision wire wound resistors. Same with that guy. Very likely that those are still very much within spec but I see some more carbon comps hiding down in there. But before I go diving in and start clipping out resistors and such, I think it would be prudent to just give this a whirl as it is. There's no uh, reason to invite trouble. Mainly I wanted to take a look under here to make sure there wasn't anything drastically wrong like a tube fell out of the socket or anything, or the tubes are missing for that matter. So uh, I will test these tubes now. And... Uh, I think this looks like an electrolytic, so uh, I think I'll give that a test with my capacitor tester. Same with this guy. I actually don't see any other caps anywhere else. Just a bunch of resistors. I used a bit of muscle on the roll chart, got all the way to one end, and found some information on it. It actually has a date of October 1st, 1963. So this should cover all the tubes, basically from the beginning of tubes through 1963, which is fantastic. Also, it seems to be moving a bit freer now. Uh, it seems to be uh, a self-contained unit. You would take out the two Phillips screws at either end of the hole roll just drops out. I don't think you can actually unmount the paper scrolls and reuse the uh, the wheel mechanism. I think you just replace the whole setup. So I'll just live with it as it is. It's not too bad now. As for the rest of it, uh, like I said, I'm going to check the tubes, especially the type 83 tube. I noticed there's some chunks of mercury floating around inside the glass. 
Uh, so I'm going to let it cook for a while with just the filament on to sort of revaporize the mercury in that before trying to use it. Uh, and I'm going to try to find some service info online. So I'm going to break this off and call this the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two.